After watching the third season of Bridgerton, I ended up with a few strong opinions about the show, about Francesca's story, about Penelope and Colin, but above all, about Cressida. So let's do a character analysis and discuss why I think the show really mistreated her this season. When I first started watching Bridgerton, a little guilty pleasure of mine, with which I have a love-hate relationship, I never imagined that I would end up rooting for Cressida Cowper come season 3. So let's go step by step over Cressida's character development, growth, and the unjust treatment that she received in Bridgerton's last season. As always, leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. I would love to hear them. The stereotypical mean girl, Cressida Cowper spent the first two seasons of Bridgerton mostly as an underdeveloped side character. Being the overcompetitive, not here to make friends, main rival to the protagonist of each season was pretty much the extent of her personality. At first she was Daphne's rival in trying to win Prince Friedrich's affection in season one. Here she also started her journey as Penelope's enemy. Then in season two, Cressida gets briefly courted by the Featherington's cousin, whose scheme gets uncovered and he is forced to run off to America. And in season three, Cressida becomes Penelope's rival for Lord Debling's affections. But Cressida also becomes Eloise's friend in the third season of Bridgerton, and that helped her screen time and consequently her characterization. But we begin to sympathize with her as we start to understand more about her motivations and her background. What we know about Cressida Cowper from the beginning is that she loves social gatherings, to be in a crowd, the hustle and bustle of the city, she likes to gossip, and she's not interested in friendships. She's here to find a husband, and she doesn't care what it takes to make that happen. On occasions where she does hang out with other women, it seems to be more out of necessity or for her own gain. Until she befriends Eloise Bridgerton. Their friendship seems genuine, based on their interactions and conversations. After all, they became friends when Eloise was an outcast at the end of season two, so it doesn't seem like Cressida befriended her for the purpose of gaining anything in particular. Their friendship doesn't get a ton of development, but Cressida is not a bad friend to Eloise. She advises her to forget about Penelope, at the time when Eloise cannot let Penelope go and is borderline obsessed with her. I know the goal has always been for Penn and Eloise to become friends again, but logically, Cressida is giving solid advice. Focus on yourself. You are right. She is undeserving of my attention. And of yours. She's being a supportive friend. You know how teenage girls will break up with a boy or have a falling out with someone, and then their whole friend circle will trash talk the ex or the ex-friend. That's pretty much what Cressida is doing. She dislikes Penelope as it is, true, I'm not denying that, but as a friend to Eloise, Cressida seems to be a better friend than Eloise is to her. Yes, Eloise somewhat helps Cressida with Lord Debling, but it seems like it's all such a chore to her. Will you help me? I do have a few books on natural history I can lend you. <laughs> Perfect. I know she doesn't want to work directly against Penelope as an enemy, but girl, you chose your side. Now commit or quit. When Cressida shares some very real and valid concerns about her future, what Eloise does is she makes a joke. The tragedy of a spinster whose father is now promising to marry her to one of his aged friends. Sounds like German literature. <laughs> that was in really poor taste. And she does backtrack, she comes to Cressida later to make sure she's okay, but the whole season, Eloise seems so preoccupied with herself, and it's really frustrating to see how she's treating Cressida. Like a side character, not so much a friend. When Eloise comes to Cressida's house, it was such an important moment because she finally got a glimpse into her family dynamic. She talks to Cressida later at the ball and comforts her, and you would think that from now on, Eloise would better understand Cressida, but then an episode or two later, she selfishly whines again about how she believes Penelope used her to get closer to Colin and how this is the worst thing ever. But it's such a petty non-issue compared to Cressida's problems. Regardless, Eloise is at least somewhat of a good influence on Cressida. For one thing, she takes a step back from gossiping. Does anyone at least have any good gossip? I cannot think of anything at the moment. 
And I adored the scene where Eloise wrongfully accuses Cressida of sharing her secret. It was such a good moment of character growth for Cressida and it set her on a good path, though I think it was ultimately left underdeveloped. I do appreciate your concern about cruelty, but perhaps you should like to find a looking glass rather than looking at me. Also, because of Eloise, Cressida is able to reflect on her actions and admits to her shortcomings. It has been difficult to find a husband. It has been more difficult still to find a friend. But the season has a way of coming between young ladies, pitting us against one another. I suppose I've fallen prey to it. We see here that Cressida is, in fact, more self-aware than she may look. But also, we gradually see that she's a product of her upbringing and environment. Unlike the Bridgerton siblings, who have a healthy and loving family dynamic and are encouraged to be themselves, look for true love, pragmatism be damned, this, however, is not Cressida's reality. Cressida has been raised to look after herself, because no one else will. More on that later. In season 3, we get to understand why she is so desperate for a husband. Her parents are putting more and more pressure on her to marry, and throughout the three seasons, she is looking for a practical, pragmatic partnership. Someone who can provide her all the material comforts. Money, estate, good social standing. Love is not something that exists in the Cowper family vocabulary. In this fictional universe that is, more and more loosely but nonetheless, based on Regency England, such a perspective on marriage, a pragmatic one, makes a lot of sense. Lady Featherington is doing the same thing with her girls. These ladies know that the best prospect for their daughters is a wealthy man with the means to provide for them, since they cannot do that for themselves. And since Cressida's mother values the material things, it's no surprise that Cressida is also looking for these things in her potential suitors. People have said that she should have ended up with Lord Depling. I don't know if I agree entirely, but it's an interesting thought. On the one hand, their marriage could be a good business transaction. He would get a wife, she would get someone who could offer her security via marriage. He plans to be away a lot, doing his thing, so the fact that they're not compatible might not even be a problem. It would stand in contrast to the Bridgerton siblings' love matches, and it could be a way to show that even unions built on mutual benefit can be successful in their own right. Yes, Lord Debling prefers isolation and nature as opposed to the city and large gatherings, but what he and Cressida do have in common is that they don't get on with their families. Marriage could be a means of escape for them both. More so for Cressida, but still, having this in common could be the first building block of their relationship. Cressida informs herself on a bird that Lord Debling likes, she makes an effort to understand what he's interested in. In trying to win his affections, she actually puts some work into it. She uses all her feminine charms, which can be way over the top, but is also impressive especially because so many characters struggle with exactly this. Eloise, Penelope, the Featherington sisters... And Cressida knows that's her strength. Or at least she's been told that's her strength. You can call it disingenuous, but wasn't Daphne doing pretty much the same thing in season 1? Her approach was just less caricature-like and not as exaggerated. This was socially expected from young ladies. To flatter the gentlemen, show interest in them and their hobbies, make themselves appear attractive, docile, and likable. To be honest, I don't know why Penelope had to go so hard after Lord Debling, since she had no intentions of marrying him. I know she thought at the time that nothing would come of Colin and her, and she wanted a safety net, the show needed a love triangle, but honestly, it was annoying because the exact same thing happened already in season 1, with Cressida, Prince Friedrich, and Daphne. Cressida goes after a man, the man is more interested in the pretty protagonist that enjoys his company but ultimately rejects him. The man disappears and Cressida is one step closer to marrying some crusty old man instead. I guess you could say this is a lesson for Cressida. She first needs to learn to be genuine and then people will like her. And maybe we will get a payoff in the future. But the thing is, she did start to open up to Lord Depling and being a bit more genuine. Do not get on with your family. Trying to fit in with my family is like trying to force a camel through the eye of a needle. I decided long ago to forge my own path, far away from them. It makes perfect sense. It really sucks that with everything she's been through in this last season, her reward is to be sent away, and all the progress she's done amounted to nothing. Yet. Hopefully, yet. 
we see that Cressida is desperate for autonomy and control over her own life. I'm not also lucky to have the support of our families as you do. Marrying may be my only way of feeling such support. Or Debling is good-natured. And most of all, my choice. Understanding this allows us to better understand her motivations, which are more often than not unkind. I'm not justifying her being cruel to Penelope and others around her, but at least she's no longer the one-dimensional mean girl, like in the past two seasons. She's interesting, she's flawed, she's tragic, but above all, she's someone we can genuinely empathize with, as opposed to petty issues that certain other characters have this season, yet the show wants to highlight those. Once she sets her mind to something, Cressida is fiercely determined, and we see that not only in the pursuit of Lord Depling, but also in trying to get herself out of that terrible marriage arrangement. That was one of the most riveting parts of the season for me. She's pretty much fighting for her life, and that was so much more engaging than the Penelope Colin drama, Benedict's shenanigans, or Eloise's feud with Penn. In this world, it is every person for themselves especially amongst women. Yes. The sad part is, Cressida is all alone. Not even Eloise is interested in helping her anymore. Because Penelope is Lady Whistledown and Colin doesn't know, and oh no, their marriage, ah. Cressida deciding that if she can't find Lady Whistledown, she'll take her identity was a bold move, but it was clearly not thought through because she had no plan for how she would prove that she is in fact Lady Whistledown. But this was in line with her character and with the desperation that she was in. She saw an opportunity and she went for it. She gave it her all, she thought she had nothing to lose, and any scenario would be better than what her parents arranged for her. Yes, the blackmailing part was bad, but it wasn't a stereotypical evil villain doing it in order to bring misery to others just for the thrill of it. It was in order to survive. Even though that doesn't excuse Cressida's actions, we could understand the motivations, and that's why I think it was good. Lastly, let me take a moment to talk about Colin trying to sympathize with Cressida. <sighs> I know what it's like to be alone too, he says and tries to talk to her about loneliness. And I get it, he can't understand her position, but it was so tone deaf of him. The next line, probably even more so. My family's love is enduring. That is the difference between you and me. You take for granted that you will always have your family's support. We are not the same, Mr. Bridgerton. I do appreciate that we got to see Cressida put him in his place and call him out on his privilege. Not all families, in fact, most families, are not like the Bridgertons, and especially the women in the show often need to be pragmatic, unless they're destined to marry a Bridgerton. I really do hope that the show brings Cressida back, because she's one of the most interesting parts of the show. In fact, just give her all the Mondrich screen time. We've skipped through that storyline anyway. Or was that just me? So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you would like me to talk about Francesca in the future, because I have so many thoughts about how her story was handled. But yeah, drop all your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.